When we say that a product is sterile, we mean that it is free of all microorganisms, dust, and foreign particles. Think about it. If a patient receives a non-sterile injection, it could lead to sepsis. That's when the body reacts to an infection in the bloodstream. It triggers inflammation and can lead to organ damage and even death. That's why today I want to show you two techniques we use to sterilize liquids and protect our patients, the autoclave and sterile filtration. Always be sure to wear your PPE, lab coat, gloves, and safety glasses. First, we're going to make a microbial growth medium that will split into three fractions. One sample will be our control. The second will go to the autoclave, and we'll use sterile filtration on the third. Then we can check each sample for contamination and compare the results. Let's make the media. Weigh out 3.6 grams of soy broth powder. Then transfer the powder to a 150 ml beaker. Add about 100 mils of water and use the magnetic stir bar to dissolve the powder. You can also use the heating element on the stir plate to help the mixture dissolve faster. Pour the mixture into a 200 ml graduated cylinder and add water to bring it to a final volume of 120 milliliters. Swirl the solution and divide it into three 40 ml fractions. Pour 40 mils of the broth into one bottle cap it, and place a piece of autoclave tape over it. This is our control. Pour another 40 mils of broth into a second bottle, loosely cap it, and add a piece of autoclave tape. Label it autoclave. We'll leave the last 40 mils of broth in the graduated cylinder for filtration. We're not going to do anything to treat the control, so let's go ahead and place it in the incubator. Now grab the second bottle, and head to the autoclave. An autoclave is sort of like a big pressure cooker. It uses temperature, pressure, and steam to sterilize materials. Our glass bottle is safe to use, and we've loosened the lid and left plenty of room for the liquid to expand. A bottle with a tightly closed cap or stopper can be crushed during the cycle. And the general rule of thumb is to leave at least one third of the container empty for expansion. Most autoclaves work similarly, but be sure to follow the SOP for the specific unit in your lab. Select slow exhaust mode. It's labeled sterilize on this unit. Now we'll wait for the cycle to complete and for the pressure gauge to read zero. Use heat resistant gloves and stand to the side to open the autoclave. Gently remove the sterilized broth and wait for it to cool. The black markings are now visible on the autoclave tape, and it tells us that it has reached the proper temperature. Place it in the incubator next to the control. Back at the workbench, we need to filter our last sample of broth. Disinfect your gloves with alcohol. Set up the filtration unit and disinfect your gloves again. Attach the tubing. Double check that your connections are tight. Remove the lid, pour the broth into the chamber, then replace the lid. Turn on the pump to start the filtration. Once all the liquid has been filtered, turn off the pump and detach the vacuum line. Label the filtered solution. And place it in the incubator with the other two samples. It's been 24 hours. Now let's compare our results. See how our control is cloudy? That means there's microbial growth in there. We call that bio burden. So the control media is definitely not sterile. But look at the autoclaved and filtered samples. They're both clear, which tells us that there's no bio burden or living microbes. So both of these methods successfully sterilized the broth. Thanks for watching.